All right, and welcome to day 27 of the 100 Days of Narration Challenge. I was about to say 100 Days of Book Challenge, but it's 100 Days of Narration Challenge. Okay, <clears throat> um, all right, For so for today's book, I've decided to choose uh, another compilation of short stories. Well, yeah, seems like I'm doing a lot of compilations to, uh, this particular week. Uh, but uh, today's compilation is a compilation of st short stories bundled in a book called The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter, which is a series of um, highly eroticized versions of uh, old fairy tales. Not that a lot of fairy tales weren't highly eroticized in their own way back then, but... Um, <clears throat> It's sort of a reminder of how dark and twisted some of these stories were before um, before they got all cleaned up for the modern era. So uh, let's just read some of the blurbs on the back. Angela Carter has extended the life and richness, richness of the fable form. Sorry, it's fables, not uh, fairy tales. And even that's a um, misnomer, fairy tales. Not really fairy tales, more, more like... Um, <clears throat> Oh, what is it? Well, it's fables, yeah. Uh, but uh, warnings, basically. Um, yeah, which is what a fable is. So why did I go to the... Why did I bother explaining myself? Anyway, Angela Carter has ex extended the life and richness of the fable form itself, partly through language that is both pellucid and sensual, but chiefly through imagination of such aerial reach that she can glide from ancient to modern, from darkness to luminosity from depravity to comedy, without any hint of strain, and without losing the elusive power of the original tales. So that was, uh, that was a little blurb at the back by the Times. So with that done, let's flip through it. And of course, because it's a series of short stories, I'm gonna have to actually say what the short story is when I stop at it in this particular book. Okay, we'll stop in this one. It's the, um, the Tiger's Bride. Um... A fable which I was not aware of until I read this book, but uh, apparently is um, quite popular, I think. No, wait, this is just Beauty and the Beast, wasn't it? I think it is. No, yes, no, yes, no, yes, 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 okay. <clears throat> so page 65, The Tiger's Bride, starts in the middle of a sentence... But it does end on an actual sentence, so that's <clears throat> all good. So here we go. On his grey mare, cloaked and masked, and once more to all appearances a man, while the valet had a fine catch of waterfowl dangling from his hand, and the corpse of a young roebuck slung up behind a saddle. What's a roebuck? I'm, I'm assuming some kind of deer. A young roebuck slung behind a saddle. I climbed, out on, uh, I climbed up on the black gelding in silence, and so we returned to the palace as the snow fell more and more heavily, obscuring the tracks that we had left behind us. <clears throat> the valet did not return me to my cell, but instead to an elegant, if old-fashioned boudoir, with sofas of faded pink brocade. Brossade? Brocade? Bro... I'm going to say brossade because that seems to be the way that word is, that uh, C-A-D-E is always pronounced, like facade, and that's all the words I know ending with C-A-D-E at the moment. <clears throat> Continuing on, a gin's treasury of oriental carpets. Oh my god, what is this? Tintinabulation, 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 tintinabulation. Tintinabulation of cut glass chandeliers. I don't know what that word is. Tintinabulation. 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 T i n t i n n a b u l a t i o n. So abulation and then tintin at the begin. Tintinabulation. Tintinabulation. Tintinabulation of cut glass chandeliers. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, try that one again from the top. The valet did not return me to my cell, but instead to an elegant, if old-fashioned boudoir, with sofas of faded, with sofas of faded pink brossade, brossade, a gin's treasury of oriental carpets, tintinabulation of cut glass chandeliers, candles, 
Oh, uh, no, that was the end of sen that was the end of the sentence. I thought that was a comma, but that's no, that's a full stop. Candles and antlet holders struck rainbows from the prismatic hearts of my diamond earrings that lay on my new dressing table at which my attentive maid stood ready with her powder puff and mirror. Intending to fix the ornaments in my ears, I took the looking glass from her hand, but it was the but it was in the midst of one of its magic fits again, and I did not see my own face in it, but that of my father. At first I thought he smiled at me. Then I saw he was smiling with pure gratification. He sat, I saw, in the parlor of our lodgings, at the very table where he had lost me. But now he was busily engaged in counting out a tremendous pile of banknotes. My father's circumstances had changed already. Well-shaven, neatly barbered, smart new clothes— a frosted glass of sparkling wine sat convenient to his hand beside an ice bucket. The beast had clearly paid cash on the nail for his glimpse of my bosom. Uh, I, I, I did not get the rhythm of that right at all. The beast had clearly pay, the beast had clearly paid cash on a nail for his glimpse of my bosom, and paid up promptly, as it had been not a sight I might have died of showing, as if it as if it had not been a sight I might have died of showing. Then I saw my father's trunks were packed, ready for departure. Could he so easily leave me here? <clears throat> there was a note on the table with the money, in a fine hand. I could read it quite clearly. The young lady will arrive immediately. Some harlot with whom he'd briskly negotiated a li liaison on the strength of spoils? Uh, no... Some harlot with whom he'd briskly negotiated a lia negotiated a liaison. Oh God! Negotiated a liaison. Negotiated a liaison on the strength of his spoils. Some harlot with whom he'd briskly negotiated a lazy liaison. Oh God! Some harlot with whom he'd briskly negotiated a liaison on the strength of his spoils. Not at all. For at that moment the valet locked. For at that moment, the valet knocked at my door to announce that I might leave the palace at any time hereafter, and he bore over his arm a handsome sable cloak. And he bore over his arm. Uh, sheesh. Damn, my first passes are usually a little bit better than this. Well, recently, anyway. But now it's like I'm back to not being able to read things properly anymore. <clears throat> For at that moment, the valet knocked at my door to, to announce that I might leave the palace at any time hereafter, and he bore over his arm a handsome, a handsome sable cloak, for my very own gratuity, for my very own little gratuity, the beast's morning gift in which he proposed to pack me up and send me off. When I looked at the mirror again, my father had disappeared, and all I saw was a pale, hollow-eyed girl whom I scarcely recognized. The valet asked politely when he should prepare the carriage, as if he did not doubt that I would leave with my booty at the first opportunity, while my maid, whose face was no longer the spit of my own, continued bonnily to beam. I will dress her in my own clothes, wind her up, send her back to perform the part of my father's daughter. Leave me alone, I said to the valet. Okay, um, that was the first pass, and that was kind of terrible. Um... <laughs> mainly because words I did not recognize were floating around everywhere and the sentence structure is a little bit stranger than I'm used to. <clears throat> There's a music there. There's a music there. But I'm obviously not grasping the music of the uh, passage that I'm reading right now. <clears throat> okay. Let's go for a second pass of this. <clears throat> <clears throat> On his gray mare... Cloaked and masked, and once more for <sighs> on his gray mare, cloaked and masked, and once more to all appearances a man, while the valet had a fine catch of waterfowl dangling from his hand, and the corpse of a young roebuck slung around, slung, slung behind a saddle. Damn it, not slung around, slung behind <clears throat> his saddle. I climbed out on the black gelding in silence, and so we returned to the. Pa and so we returned to the palace as the snow fell more and more heavily, obscuring the tracks that we had left behind us. <clears throat> the valet did not return me to my cell, but instead to an elegant, if old-fashioned boudoir, with sofas of faded pink brossade, a gin's treasury of oriental carpets, 
tintinnabulation of cut glass chandeliers. Candles and antlet holders struck rainbows from the prismatic hearts of my diamond earrings that lay on my new dressing table at which my attentive maid stood ready with her powder puff and mirror. Intending to fix the ornaments in my ears, I took the looking glass from her hand, but it was a but it was in the midst of one's own but it was in the midst of one of its magic fits again, and I did not see my own face in it, but that of my father. At first I thought he was smi at first I thought he smiled at me. Then I saw he was smiling with pure gratification. He sat, I saw, in the parlor of our lodgings, at the very table where he had lost me. But now he was busily engaged in counting out in counting out a tremendous pile of banknotes. My father's circumstances had changed already. Well shaven, neatly barbered, smart new clothes. A frosted glass of sparkling wine sat convenient to his hand, beside an ice bucket. Damn it. <clears throat> A frosted glass of sparkling wine sat convenient to his hand, beside an ice bucket. The beast had clearly paid cash and a nail for his glimpse of my bosom, and paid up promptly, as if it had not been a sight I might have. As if it had not been a sight I might have died of. Hmm. As if it had not been a sight I might have died of showing. Then I saw my father's trunks were packed, ready for departure. Could he so easily leave me here? There was a note on the table with the money in a fine hand. In a fine hand, I could read it quite clearly. I could read it quite clearly. The young lady will arrive immediately. Some harlot with whom he'd briskly negotiated a liaison on the strength of his spoils? Not at all, for at that moment the valet knocked. For for at that moment, the valet knocked on my door to announce that I might leave the palace at any time hereafter, and he bore over his arm a handsome sable cloak. And he bore over his arm, and he bore over his arm a hands uh, arm a handsome sable cloak. And he bore over his arm a handsome sable cloak, my very own little gr, my very own little gratuity. The beast's morning gift, in which he proposed to pack me up and send me off. When I looked in the mirror again, when I looked at the mirror again, my father had disappeared, and all I saw was a pale, hollow-eyed girl who I. <clears throat> when I looked at the mirror again, my father had disappeared, and all I saw was a pale, hollow-eyed, hollow, 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 not holla, holla. When I looked at the mirror again. My father had disappeared, and all I saw was a pale, hollow-eyed girl. I'm doing it again. Hollow, not hollow. Hollow, hollow-eyed girl. When I looked at the mirror again, my father had disappeared, and all I saw was a pale, hollow-eyed girl whom I'm, whom I scarcely recognize, whom I scarcely recognized. <clears throat> The valet asked politely when he should prepare the carriage, as if he did not doubt that I would, as if he did not, as if he did not doubt. Ah,、uh, this is a terrible day. I'm having a really terrible time with this. The valet asked politely when he should prepare the carriage, as if he did not doubt that I would leave, as he as if he did not doubt that I would leave with my booty at the first opportunity. While my maid, whose face was no longer the spit of my own, continued to bon, continued bonnily to beam, I will dress her in my own clothes, wind her up, send her back to perform the part of my father's daughter. Leave me alone, I said to the valet, and it ends there. Ah, ah, <clears throat>、oh, really terrible, really, really, really horrifically terrible. Today is not a good day for this. Oh, dear Lord. Okay. <clears throat> second, first, and second pass were both awful. Ah,、uh, I guess the best trick at this point is to just slow things down significantly. <clears throat> On his gray mare, cloaked and masked. <laughs> Can't even get through the first sentence. On his gray mare, cloaked and masked, and once more, to all appearances, a man. 
while the valet had a fine catch of waterfowl dangling from his hand, and the corpse of a young roebuck slung behind a saddle. I climbed up on the black gelding in silence, and so we returned to the palace. <clears throat> and so we returned to the palace, as the snow fell more and more heavily, obscuring the tracks that we had left behind us. The valet did not return me to my cell, but instead to an elegant if old-fashioned boudoir, with sofas of faded pink brossade, a gin's treasury of orient, a gin's treasury of oriental carpets. Tintinnabulation of cut glass chandeliers, candles in antlered holders struck rainbows from prisma, struck rainbows from the prismatic hearts of my diamond earrings that lay on my new dressing table, at which my attentive maid stood ready with a powder puff and mirror. Intending to fix the ornaments in my ears, I took the looking glass from her hand, but it was in, but it was in the midst of one of its magic fits again. But it was in the midst of one of its magic fits again, and I did not see my own face in it, but that of my father. At first, I thought he smiled at me. Then I saw he was smiling with pure gratification. He sat, I saw, in the parlor of our lodgings, at the very table where he had lost me. But now he was busily engaged in counting out a tremendous pile of banknotes. My father's circumstances had changed already. Well shaven, neatly barbered, smart new clothes, a frosted <clears throat> a frosted glass of sparkling wine sat convenient to his hand behind sat convenient to his hand beside an ice a frosted glass of sparkling wine sat convenient to his hand beside an ice bucket. The beast had clearly paid cash on the nail for his glimpse of my bosom, and paid up promptly. As if it had not been a sight, I might have died of showing. Then I saw my father's trunks were packed, ready for departure. Could he so easily leave me here? There was a note on the table with the money in a fine hand. I could read it quite clearly. The young lady will arrive immediately. Some harlot with whom he'd briskly negotiated a liaison on the strength of his spoils? Not at all, for at that moment. The valet knocked at my door to announce that I might leave the palace at any time hereafter, and he bore over his arm a handsome sable cloak, my very own little gratuity, the beast, the beast's morning gift in which he proposed to pack me up and send me off. When I looked at the mirror again, my father had disappeared, and all I saw was a pale, hollow-eyed girl whom I scarcely recognized. Whom I scarcely recognized, whom I scarcely recognized. <clears throat> the valet asked politely when he should. The valet asked politely when he should prepare the carriage, as if he did not doubt that I would leave with my booty at the first opportunity. While my mind, whose face was no longer the spit of my oh, sorry, while my maid, whose face was no longer the. <clears throat> Let's try that entire sentence again. The valet asked politely when he should prepare the carriage, as if he did not doubt that I would, as if he did not doubt that I would leave with my booty at the first opportunity. While my maid, whose face no longer the spit of my own, continued bonnily to beam, whose face was no longer the spit of my own, continued to be, ah,、uh, bonnily to beam. <clears throat> I will dress her in my own clothes, wind her up. Send her back to perform the part of my father's daughter. Leave me alone, I said to the valet. Okay, so third pass was better. Again, slowing down th- probably helped things a lot. Just have to keep remembering that. Slow things down. Slow things down. Slow things down. Okay. <clears throat> So anyway, that was book twenty-seven of the Hundred Days of Narration Challenge,、uh, the Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter, and the oh damn it, I closed the book already. And the actual short story in there was the Tiger's Bride, page sixty-five.、Uh, yeah, so twenty-seven is down. Tomorrow is day twenty-eight, and that means that it's a nunder. Another, another、uh, mystery book challenge.、Uh, mystery book challenge number four. 
So uh, be sure to come back for that. Mystery Book Challenge number four, tomorrow. Be there.